TMZ recently caught up with Judge Mathis at the airport, and there were some things that he mentioned about his marriage that I want to talk to y'all about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey, welcome. But if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for spinning the block and coming back. Now, there was this short clip that went almost kind of viral of Judge Mathis while he was at the airport, TMZ rolled up on him, talking to him about his marriage, and it struck a chord with so many people that we have to talk about right now. If you didn't see the video, go ahead and go over to TMZ. It's like a three minute clip, go watch it. But there were some things that I was like, oh my God, this is so powerful. One being you could hear the hurt in Judge Greg Mathis's voice. Now he has been a judge on TV and been in the TV and media space for over 20, 25 something years, right? So he isn't um, always the nicest or he's oftentimes funny or he's a little harsh on some of his shows and with certain people. This was the first time that I heard the hurt in his voice. It was almost like his voice was shaking when the TMZ camera guy pulled up on him and asked him how he was doing. He was like, I'm not doing well. And I love the honesty because so many times we could have easily, or he could have easily said, I'm fine, it's cool, I'm good, like we always do, I'm doing well. But he was honest. And not only to be honest about something that's so touchy, but also being honest as a black man in general. Yes, I have to go there because black men, whether you're older or not, don't always tap into their emotions or feel safe enough to do so. So the fact that he took the time, the space to answer TMZ's question, because you know how TMZ be. They be throwing curveballs, they be saying off the wall stuff, but this time he answered their questions and he was honest, y'all. He could have lied, he could have withheld information. He could have said, it ain't none of y'all business what me and Linda and me and my wife are doing. You know, we've been married for 39 years, we are trying to keep this private. But it was almost like he was giving honesty, but he wanted to give a cautionary tale for anybody else who's watching and who may be going through something similar or who will go through something similar in the future. He said two things that stuck out to me. One, he said, don't neglect your wife. And we know that we love a good ambitious man. We love a man who has a career and being that he travels a lot and he's gone. He said he was gone for like three weeks or something of that nature at a time. Yes, that impacts you. That impacts your family. That impacts your marriage because you're not always physically present. And he admitted, yes, I travel, I work, but I was also hanging out with my homeboys and doing things when I really should have been at home tending to my wife and tending to my business. And he said that she was basically number three. Ouch. I don't know what that's like to be number three in a marriage, but it can't feel good. And being that they have been married for 39 years, that's a very long time. And we don't know how long Linda has been feeling like this. We don't know how long this has been going on, but I know for relationships that have been in the game for a long time, it isn't just some overnight thing. I'm sure she wasn't talking about divorce just because he wasn't there for one week or this was the first time this happened. No, 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 no. This is probably years and maybe even decades, dare I say, of repeated chances, repeated behavior. And maybe she's spoken up about these things before and nothing has been done to rectify it. He also stated that neglect can create suspicion. He debunked all the rumors. He said, I didn't cheat. And I guess there was some rumor going around stating that he was inappropriate with children. He was like, that wasn't the case either. It was sheer neglect. And I am being open and honest about that. And he said, I'm going to get my wife. He said, I'm fighting for my wife. He said, I hope and pray that she does not follow through with the divorce, but I'm trying to get home now because I need to make sure that we are locked and loaded and good. And he said that we're cordial, we still live in the same home, but there's some work that needs to be done. And if you are in this place, you know that this isn't some quick overnight process. They didn't get here overnight and it's not gonna be fixed overnight either. I do know one thing and that means Judge Mathis is going to have to have change behavior. I don't know how that's gonna work with him being locked into a contract for media and TV and he has obligations, especially if you're traveling. I don't know what needs to be done. I don't know if she got a role with you now. Something needs to be done to switch and change what is going on in their relationship and in their marriage. And I love the fact that he wanted to fight. So many times in this culture, we give up so easy on relationships. Oh, they did one little thing. I'm over it. I'm done. I'm breaking up with you. It's, it's whatever. We're getting a divorce. And it's just like, no, this was 39 years 
of us being a unit, and I don't want to throw all of that away. So I'm super proud of Judge Mathis for being real, raw, honest, authentic, truthful, and really sharing that with other people, being like, hey, yo, if nothing else comes of this, whether she chooses to divorce me or not, please let my life and how I have been behaving be a cautionary tale to people who might be in a similar situation don't neglect your wife. So thank you so much for watching another video on my channel. Please feel free to stick around, watch some other TV and movie show reviews and some celebrity on my channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Be blessed.